Today we're going to be talking about changes to earth surfaces or what we call fast and slow land changes. Um, we're going to especially focus in on weathering, erosion, and deposition. Here you'll see three pictures of me and this is my best friend Carly. We went to Guatemala and we hiked up this volcano and this is related so that's why I'm showing it to you. And we roasted marshmallows on top of the volcano. It was so cool. And what had happened was like, this was an active volcano. You would see smoke and stuff coming out of it. And we were on these lava fields where the top had cooled, right? Because we could walk. But if you put your hands in between the rocks, it was hot. And that was how you can see the, the golden brown of my marshmallow for my s'mores. They were delicious. It was amazing. And volcanoes or volcanic eruptions are one example of an earth change. Okay, so you can have fast or slow changes. If you can think about it like a fast one you'd want to watch on camera it would happen in seconds, hours, or days. It'd be really interesting to watch. Whereas a slow change to earth's surface is going to be like really slow, like thousands of years or a million years or even just a couple, like just a time where you wouldn't want to watch. Okay, some fast land changes. I know you guys learned these in third grade, but just to review, we've got earthquakes, landslides, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions. So these are things that are quickly breaking or moving or destructing or something to the Earth's surface. After these occur, we've got change land, right? That's the whole point of a land change. So those are fast land changes. Slow land changes take a long time, and we break it into weathering, erosion, and deposition. Now, these all go hand in hand, so it can be kind of confusing, but how you can remember it is weathering is the breaking down of rocks, and I always do this when I do it. Weathering is the breaking down of rocks. This is lame, but you should do it at home too. Erosion. Erosion is the movement of sediment. Well, the movement of sediment from broken rock, but is the movement of sediment. And sediment would be the pieces of the rock that break off. And then deposition is the dropping of sediment in a new place. So last year we would always do like a mic drop, like over there, or you can think of like throwing something. So the weathering is the breaking of the rock. The erosion moves the pieces that got broken off and deposition is putting it in a new place. Until it's been deposited or put in a new place, it's not deposition. So let's talk about some examples. Weathering, the breaking down of rocks. That could happen with water, ice, wind, animals, or growing plants. Here you can see some pictures of weathering. It's crazy, the rock formations that occur from weathering. It's so cool. Um, so these could be examples from a mixture of these things. I'm thinking this bottom one's probably wind. That top one looks like, a, I bet, plants and water and wind. I've got a couple more examples. Um, we can see water can cause these rock formations to form from just washing over it over and over. So you can think about um, coastlines and rivers and streams and the rocks that are in there. Think about how those rocks in the bottom of a stream got so smooth. Um, we have something called ice wedging. I think this is my favorite. And ice wedging is so cool. What happens as the water will seep down into the rocks, right? It seeps down in here. And then when water freezes, it expands. So the water expands and pushes the rock apart as it freezes. And then it causes these big old cracks. It's super cool. That's called ice wedging. And it's causing the rocks to break apart. That's the whole point. Here we see weathering caused by growing plants, by roots. The roots are pushing into rocks and breaking the rocks apart or cracking them.
And then also here we see some cute little dudes in a in a little hole that they made um, that broke down that rock by digging a hole or whatever they did. Now let's move to erosion. Erosion is the movement of sediment. So you can think about we had some type of rocks breaking off, right? Now those broken pieces that got broken off are going to get moved through erosion. So erosion agents, water, glaciers, wind, gravity. We can see here, up here, erosion caused by water. That water is going to carry away these rock pieces down this river, whatever it is. And as it continues to take more and more pieces, as the river continues to move that sediment, we can see that what's left is a very changed landscape. Down here, this is called a glacier. And glaciers are big sheets of packed ice and snow. Um, you can think like ice caps, right? And what's crazy is that glaciers can move. So these glaciers slowly are melting a little and refreezing and melting a little and refreezing and slowly moving over, you know, millions of years or thousands of years. And what they do is they form these valleys as the glacier moves. And you can see before and after pictures of where there used to be glaciers and now it's like beautiful green land. And there's these big U-shaped valleys formed from glaciers. Erosion can also be caused by wind and gravity. So you can see here the wind and maybe that wind is carrying like some sand or something too. The, or the wind is going to pick up those little pieces of rock, because remember, erosion is the movement. It's going to pick those pieces of rock, and the wind is going to blow, blow them away. Or gravity might cause erosion, and the gravity might move, the force of gravity might move those pieces of rock that broke off from weathering, might move those pieces of rock um, down, down a hill, down a cliff. And here we say, it says gravity caused by erosion, slump, creep, landslides, mudslides, and avalanches. So we've got a movement downward of sediment or broken rock. Last, we have deposition, the dropping of sediment in a new place. So erosion and deposition go very hand in hand, but when it's moving, that's erosion. When it's dropped in a new place, that's deposition. So deposition can cause sand dunes, river deltas, and even islands to form. So here we can see in this desert, these sand dunes, these like sand hills are forming. And what's happening is this sand was carried and then dropped in the same place, right? And over and over, that sand's being dropped in the same place until it creates these really cool sand dunes, sand hills. Um, Next, river deltas. This here behind me is a river delta. And what happens is as rivers and streams meet oceans and lakes and bigger bodies of water, they slow down a, li a little bit and can start depositing or dropping the sediment. So you can think about a rushing river is gonna be, is gonna be carrying sediment erosion is happening, right? It's carrying that sediment down the river. Well, now it's getting to this new location and it's slowing down a little bit and all this sediment or this these broken rocks, this soil, this dirt down here, excuse me, that was carried is being dropped in a new place. And that creates this like fan shape at the edge of rivers where they meet lakes and oceans. And the last is a formation of islands. So you can think about the same type of thing as a river delta, where sediment is being carried to the same place and dropped in a new place. So those are examples of weathering, erosion, and deposition.